Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. This is your host, Rahul Pratap Singh, and I work as the investment manager at the European Energy Efficiency Fund. As some of you might know, the fund is an initiative of the European Commission in 2011, and it serves as an innovative public-private partnership aimed at mitigating climate change through energy efficiency measures and the use of renewable energy in member states of the European Union. It focuses on uh, financing projects in energy efficiency, small-scale renewable energy, and to some extent also clean urban transportation, where the target is municipalities, public authorities, or other entities which are acting on behalf of these authorities. The fund also offers a technical assistance facility to support public authorities in preparing uh, sustainable energy investments. This podcast is a series, it's an initiative of the fund where we intend to touch upon sustainable investments. As most of us are aware, a lot needs to be done across Europe to reach the net zero emissions target by 2050. And in the podcast today, we would like to speak about sustainable investments and how it should look in practical. For this, today I have as a guest Asta from Lithuania. And she's representing VIPA. Hi, Asta. Welcome to the podcast. Hello, everyone. And thank you, Raul, for short introduction. I'm very glad that I can participate in this postcard series, as I fully agree with you that it's a good way of raising awareness of the importance of sustainable investing. A couple words about myself. I have a legal background and more than 10 years of experience in small and medium-sized business. Uh, For the last five years, I've been working on investments in sustainable energy, starting with public buildings, renewable energy, and different kinds of energy efficiency projects. As Raul have already mentioned, I work for VIPA, uh, which is a national promotional institution and established in Lithuania back in 2014. Thank you, Asta. That was a crisp introduction. Uh, So you mentioned this is a government initiative. uh, So... What has been the driving force for the government to set up VIPA? Could you just introduce that as well to us? Yeah, there are areas of uh, lack of funding, areas where financial intermediaries are less likely to act, such as uh, multi apartment building retrofit or energy efficiency projects. And unfortunately, Energy efficiency financing is still novel to commercial banks in Lithuania. Uh, They lack a track record, especially in green funding, and energy efficiency projects are still perceived as long payoff. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, uh, the state needs stronger negotiation positions. uh, And, for example, if commercial banks do not participate, or the conditions of commercial banks are unacceptable, uh, then there is an alternative, VIPA, which can directly implement uh, financial instruments and fill the gap in the market. So basically, that's why government needs needed to step in and into the market and create a VIPA. Indeed, uh, the government is playing quite an instrumental role in helping set this up. So apart from the regulatory requirement, what other ways has government helped? Uh, VIPA? Uh, So government provided initial capital for us. So the initial capital was uh, the 100,000 euros and later it was increased to 2 million, went to 11 million and finally last year it was increased up to 31 million euros. So we are under supervision of uh, Ministry of Finance. And the Minister of Finance is the sole shareholder of us. And the Ministry identifies priority financing areas and uh, approves our financial instruments. Interesting. So basically, there is a financial implication for the Ministry along with the involvement. And they are reinforcing their interest by the policies and putting money into projects where they think the impact will be felt. So uh, it's been a few years now since you guys have been working. So what kind of uh, competencies and experiences have you accumulated with regards to sustainable financing? 
Vipa has accumulated uh, competencies in the area of sustainable financing uh, and also funding of solutions designed to increase energy efficiency and developing renewable energy projects such as multi-apartment building re uh, retrofit, uh, uh, public building retrofit, uh, and uh, as you already mentioned, uh, uh, these are key priority sectors in the state and European Union policy for 2050. And there are established goals which we need to achieve. So seeking to contribute to those established goals, an investment platform for funding uh, such kind of projects uh, was launched in Lithuania. And uh, this it was BIPA initiative. And uh, we are very pleased that back in 2000, 2021, EFF has joined our investment platform as the new investor, and now we can provide a large scope of investments. Thank you. But really, I'm really intrigued by the fact that the government has moved from a few thousand euros to 31 million euros in such a short period of time. It's absolutely a stellar story that you can talk about. Uh, what about the, the practical aspects of getting the VIPA platform started? Uh, well, the idea was uh, to create an investment platform which would accumulate different kind of resources, attract from private investors and channel those resources to sustainable projects and to increase investment in energy efficiency sectors. And in this part, I, I would like to add that um, this investment platform was our own initiative. Of course, we had uh, support from the government but it was then uh, without state resources. So we attracted 10 million euros from EEF, from your side. We invested uh, our own resources, 10 million euros, and also we received um, a loan from European Investment Bank. It's now 12.5 million euros. So the total investment platform's capital has already 24.5 million, but um, we're planning to increase it to, uh, with additional 12.5 million euros in future so our target loan portfolio um, is about 37 million euros and it's done uh, by the private investors without state participation that is stupendous because uh, now you are able to combine 2 million of public funding with uh, 35 million of private capital which is an uh, excellent leverage uh, effect that we have brought into the platform. I think it is a good story that VIPA or uh, Lithuania is doing, plus it is a good story for other countries to leverage public capital with private capital. And the timing couldn't have been perfect for you in terms of driving this change in Lithuania. So what are the sustainable criteria that you use to outline projects uh, when identifying them for your platform? Talking about sustainable criteria, so of course there are CO2 emission and uh, energy consumption. So those two criteria criteria are the main one. Uh, all our projects should target uh, to decrease energy consumption or CO2 emission by at least 30%. Uh, but it's not only about CO2 emission and energy consumption. Uh, we also have to take a look uh, uh, at uh, uh, overall project impact uh, on social and uh, environmental issues. And uh, our targeted projects are retrofit uh, of public buildings, uh, street lighting networks, and development of solar energy. So basically all these projects one way or another reflect sustainability criteria and give a significant impact on social aspect. All this sounds pretty interesting in terms of uh, creating an impact and also aligning it what the world needs right now. Um, especially with the ESG perspective, we look at uh, these investments that you guys are doing, you're already targeting contemplating what kind of impact will be uh, in terms of environmental impact, in terms of social impact. So it seems like you are using these CO2 and performance indicators as KPIs to select projects and then to use yes. these uh, as, a, as a guiding stone to track the performance of these projects. Yes, definitely. So how difficult has it been for you to identify these projects, uh, to, to make them align with the criterias and to, to deliver on the promises 
in terms of ESG? Uh, that's a very good question, Raul. Good project is one of the biggest challenge for us. Uh, private companies are not willing to invest into energy efficiency projects as they still uh, think that it's perceived as a long lasting payoff. Uh, well, borrowing opportunities for municipalities are limited. So we need to get into public and private partnership model in order to renovate public buildings or outdated street lighting network. Uh, but implementation of PPP projects needs special skills and it's very time consuming process and requires significant uh, investments, which is not so easy to obtain in the market. So we see that there is a gap uh, in the market and we think that we could fill this gap with our funding from our investment platform. What are you doing in terms of attracting these projects in the local market? We are actively working with the local authorities. With the, we are acting, uh, working with the municipalities, uh, uh, promoting our activities, and uh, have different kind of um, activities with the municipalities. Because, as I mentioned, we are a governmental institution, and we have mm -hmm. kind of a network of municipalities where we can participate in the discussions. In the, in the earlier parts of the podcast, you mentioned that EEEF has entered uh, as an investor, as a private investor. So could you talk briefly about the partnership models and uh, what kind of models are operational in VPAS platform and why these matter to you? Why do you need them for sustainable investing on a larger scale? Public and private uh, sector partnership is a legally established type of cooperation between state or municipalities and the private companies here in Lithuania and, of course, in all Europe. Uh, but this model is still in developing stage in Lithuania. Uh, nevertheless, be we believe that it could contribute to sustainable investing. Uh, the idea is that the state or municipality uh, with the participation of private companies and, of course, with the participation of private capital could increase abilities to renovate old buildings and outdated street lighting systems. And uh, our established investment platform could bring the added value to such kind of projects. Uh, I have a counter question for you, Raul. I know mm -hmm. that you have uh, technical assistance here in Lithuania. You work with the municipalities, uh, but uh, I never heard that you have invested into uh, such kind of uh, fund. So I'm wondering why have you chose our investment platform and um, maybe you have similar projects elsewhere? You rightly mentioned that the fund started off with the technical assistance facility which also served as a foot in the door for us uh, to gain more insights in Lithuania, to gain more information about energy market in Lithuania and, uh, and its concerns about energy security. Um, these projects are typically uh, projects where the municipalities and public authorities want to identify sustainable investments, which can then go to financing entities like ourselves or others in the market to get financed. Uh, VIPA for us uh, has been an interesting initiative because on one hand we see it's quite innovative. It is a unique approach of combining capital from different sources to deliver real sustainable impact. The first project that was onboarded on the platform and that sort of uh, sets the tone for what is to follow. We feel confident that uh, VIPA is doing the right job in Lithuania and many such initiatives are needed in and outside of Lithuania to tackle the challenge that Europe is faced with right now. So we are very happy that you have joined our forces and we believe that you could bring a new experience and best practice to our investment platform that would, can help us to improve our activities. Indeed, it will be our honor as the Open. Energy Efficiency Fund to share whatever we have learned over the last decade in terms of uh, creating an impact and quantifying the impact and that uh, we can handle a platform and to increase the impact in Lithuania uh, in the years to come. Overall, I think VIPA is in Lithuania is a very strong initiative for sustainable investments in real assets. And um, I mentioned there are such initiatives, but these are uh, these remain few and in far between. Overall, the, the, the sustainable investment remains low, except for a few breakthroughs in, um, in renewable energy projects. If you, look at the, uh, if you look at the global statistics for uh, fossil fuel dependency, 
uh, the energy production in 2021 uh, using coal was substantially higher than from renewable sources. So clearly there is a room to play and the major interventions are needed at national and local levels to achieve that target. Uh, we need to obviously ensure that these targets are met in a time frame so that we never breach the 2050 trajectory. And uh, this, I think there is no better way to achieve it than to join forces and make mutual efforts than doing all this on our own. I think that's a wrap for the first podcast. Um, I really thank you all for tuning in and I hope this was informative at the same time interesting. Uh, I also thank Asta for joining in and for helping us with this. Thank you, Raul. It was a very interesting discussion.